Cool. Thanks, Brian. And thanks, Andrew. And thanks, all of you, for coming here and giving us the opportunity to talk to you about Kanban tonight. It's something that Mark and I are both very passionate about. And we have developed a presentation. Well, it's not really just a presentation. It's a session. It's interactive, which is why we have the tables. If you've been, been to DC SUG before, you'll recognize that this is a bit of an unusual setup. So first, we'll spend a little bit of time introducing ourselves in more detail. Uh, as Brian mentioned, I'm Trent Hone. I am an agile coach here at Excel Consulting. I've got a lot of history and background with software development, software engineering. Started out as a software engineer, got very interested in how we learn and improve and how we go about our work. And recently I've been trying to, recently, well, past 15 years, I've been trying to wed that with uh, a historical interest that I have. So I'm a, a published historian, I've won some awards. This, this year I achieved second place in the Chief of Naval Operations Historical Essay Contest and have a book coming out this following spring. What ties that work together with the software and agile coaching that I do is I like to understand how organizations evolve and learn. And I think Kanban is a very effective evolutionary approach to improvement. Great. Mark? Thank you, Trent. Right. Thanks. So it's great seeing everyone here today, some new faces and uh, faces I haven't seen in a while. And uh, so thanks very much for coming out today. Um, I had a slightly different path than Trent. I came up more from a uh, business analyst and project management uh, position. But uh, I am, too, an Agile coach here at Excella. And um, I've always, speaking of WED, I always wanted to WED my interest in training along with IT and working with teams. And when I learned more and more about Agile, uh, that was definitely a fit that was, uh, in many ways, I felt made for me. Um, <clears throat> I spent a lot of my time initially with Scrum, but as I continue to work with teams and uh, helping uh, Trent with the training that we do, the more I'm realizing that Kanban is probably something that I'm even more excited about. And I can, I have a personal interest in Kanban outside IT, which uh, I'm hoping that Excella can take a little bit more of an active role next year, and hopefully I can help them be part of that as well. Also, if you want to talk about photography and or astronomy, uh, please see me. I love both. I uh, was able to get away this summer to go to Kentucky to watch the eclipse. I was in the middle of an Amish field um, with about a thousand other people. And uh, I love to tell the stories there. So if anyone wants to hear about that, uh, please let me know. So with that said, oh, one other, one quick comment going to the um, presentation. This workshop is set up to be very interactive, highly interactive. So for those who are maybe only one or, I don't think there's any more ones, but two people per table, you may want to join with another two-person table just to get some of the benefits of the conversations that are going to happen. So something to think about. You don't have to, but if you want to, uh, please feel free to go ahead and do that. All right, Trent. Cool. Yeah, so <clears throat> we want to spend some time initially uh, introducing Kanban. We're here at a... Scrum Meetup, and grateful to have the opportunity to talk about Kanban and Scrum Meetup. Fortunately, Brian has structured it so that it's very all-encompassing, these discussions and, and meetups that we have here. Uh, but we don't want to assume that necessarily you understand Kanban very well, uh, so we'll introduce it a little bit at first. This is a very nice definition. Kanban is a management method. Right? Okay, so it's a management method. That, that phrasing is important. Right? It's not necessarily a process. We're not talking about a software engineering process. It's more generic than that. It's a management method that fosters certain things. One is directly improving service delivery. One of the things we get into in the Kanban class is talking about a service-oriented paradigm for Kanban. So services have a requester. They involve knowledge creation or knowledge discovery activities, so some sort of workflow. And then there's someone who receives the service at the end or the product of the service. You can see how this might apply to software development, but it also applies to other things. Mark was talking about how he's very interested in Kanban outside of IT. So there are organizations that use Kanban for things other than software development or software engineering. Right? We know of some marketing teams that do this. I know of people who have written books using Kanban <coughs> to, uh, interactively with others as a way to manage the flow of chapters or sections and the like. 
So don't just think that Kanban is necessarily isolated to software or IT work. The second bullet here, catalyzing improvements, right? We want to trigger positive changes. This is something that I feel Kanban is very, very good at. And that triggers the third one here, evolving a business or whatever this organization is that is using Kanban to be more fit for purpose. Two key pieces in that sentence. The first is evolving, right? So we're thinking about evolution, not necessarily adapting or modifying within the current context, but evolving potentially beyond it. And when we think of evolution, it's easy to think of a biological context that is deliberate. And that's where the phrase fit for purpose comes in and why it's in quotes to sort of highlight it, right? We think of organisms, species that have been successful in the world, they are they have niches, they are fit. And oftentimes <laughs> these niches that they fit into co-evolve along with the species or the organization or the organism. So we're hoping to do the same sort of thing. And I think Kanban is quite good at this, right? Not only does it evolve in terms of the process and the workflow, but it helps shape the environment that the Kanban system fits within. We're not gonna get quite that sophisticated tonight, but we will talk about different boards and we will chart an increasing level of sophistication as we go through them. There are a few specific practices that Kanban in involves. Visualization, most of you are probably familiar with that, and limiting the amount of work that's in progress. These, to my mind, are two of the most important ones. There are others that are valuable and also important, but if you wanted to start somewhere, I would recommend that this is where you should start. Visualize the work and limit how much of it is going on at once. Those two, once they are in place, allow a team or an organization to begin to manage flow more effectively, the flow of work through the system. The WIP limiting is the lever that allows that and the visualization creates a shared <coughs> sense among the team. Explicit policies are also very useful. We can have a shared sense of what is going on when we look at the board, but if we have different assumptions about what different states mean, you know, so suppose something is in progress and we have different assumptions about what in progress means, that can be a source of friction or confusion. If we have explicit policies, that goes away. Feedback loops help us improve not only the work, but also our understanding of the work and the system that we have. Remember, we want our Kanban system to evolve and improve over time. Feedback loops are a key element to that. And then improve collaboratively, you know, using the shared contextual knowledge of the entire team or organization using the Kanban board, and create some experiments. If we are managing flow, we'll have a pretty good sense of some of the things that we can measure. Lead time, cycle time, how long does it take for work to go through the system? This makes it easy to create experiments that then can see if we are, our changes are improving things in a positive way. Mark, anything that you'd like to add to that? You've done a great job. Cool. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Sort of about Kanban in general. Is this a rehash for most people? Some, okay. Cool. <coughs> so we'll go through relatively quickly. This is a system. This is a Kanban system, it's a board, and it has whip limits, right? So those are the whip limits up there at the top. We have also, although you can't read it, we've just done it with, with lines, so, so don't worry your eyesight isn't going bad if you can't read the policies down here. But we've got some visualization of, of policies as well. And then those dotted outlines that showed up within the board, those are the open slots that we have in this version of the system. So you can see that we have a whip limit of three in validate and two items in validate currently, so we've got one open slot. This is what Kanban allows us to see is how many open positions or pullable spaces that we have within the system and then we can pull work through it based on those openings. Right, so we've got some nice animation that walks us through this. All right, we can pull one over into validate. That creates another open slot in this implement. 
So now we have three open slots there because the whip limit is five and we have only two items. And we can pull more work into it from the discover done column. And you see that this pull signal, these open slots, move upstream, move to the left side of the board. It's signal where we have capacity for more work so that we can pull more items into the system. And so the whip limit and the visualization creates this very nice gating effect where work flows through the system at a rate that makes sense based on the policies that we have established. So with that introduction, we're now going to get into some more details that we can talk through interactively as a group. And Mark is going to introduce that. I to am us. going to introduce that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So everyone at their table should have uh, at least two sheets, and it's meant to share. But if anyone needs an extra sheet, uh, please let me know. I, I have a couple extra here. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to read this together. That way, it kind of brings us all in, uh, to kind of focus with each other of what's what what we're actually going to be doing. Okay. So with that said, it's what's on the sheet is exactly what's on the screen here. So. What I'd like you to do is imagine that you were hired to provide consulting services for a new team that's just starting out with Kanban. Now the team has been struggling with their implementation and is looking forward to your expert guidance, your support and advice. And it's your first day and you just walked into the team room to look at their board. You want to make smart observations and thoughtful interpretations so you can have meaningful conversations with the team members. The team starts assembling in the team room for the daily stand-up, and you plan on making some comments afterwards. <clears throat> the questions for you today, and for what we're going to be doing until uh, the close of the session today, what comments would you make? As you review the following boards that we're going to be showing you, consider the following questions below to help think through your comments to the team. And note that as we show you different boards, one board does not depend on the prior one. Each one can be considered individually, separately. So what are you observing? Why might what you're observing be happening? And what questions would you ask the team once the stand-up is over? So basically, you're consultants, much like Trent and myself. You're going in there. You're going to be looking. You haven't really talked to the team. But you're observing already as they're having their stand-up. You want to be smart because they're paying you lots of money, right, to be a consultant. You want to be smart and ask some thoughtful questions. That's why they hired you. So with that said, we're going to do the first board. Trent and I are going to do the first board together with you. And then after that, we'll actually uh, break off a little bit and have each table do uh, the boards that we show. And then we'll kind of regroup afterwards. Any questions? OK. All right. So this is your first board. And we'll turn the tables to all of you. What is it that you see? No whip limits. Okay. So no whip limits. It's just a task board, no whip limits. Okay. So no, just a task board, no whip. Tester board. The tester is bored. Why do you say that? <laughs> yeah, he only has one thing. No work got completed yet. Yeah. There's a lot in development. A lot in development, nothing has been completed. Yep. Like yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it looks like they're pushing versus pulling. And yeah. over here, the statement was that there's no policies. No policies. Which is a good observation. Yes, you're yes. absolutely correct. Is there a, a, does the placement that they're not aligned on the left hand side <clears throat> any kind of hierarchy? Those things? That's an interesting. We're actually going to talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, did you want to say anything about it now? You, I just want to make sure I understood the question. So the placement on the left-hand side? Aligned. This? Left Here? Yeah. yeah, okay. So does that mean that it depicts some kind of hierarchy? Oh, so you're curious to know if, if sort of their horizontal relationship means anything. That, that's a useful question? Sure. I don't know. That mm -hmm. I don't know. But that's certainly something you can ask. Yeah. Definitely so. Yeah, so those are useful observations. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. sorts of questions, now that we've sort of aligned around that, what, what kinds of questions might you ask this team if you were a consultant and came in to see this board? Yes? Uh, what's the team makeup? Like, why is someone stuck in the 
Hmm. And and what drives that question? Okay, so you're you're looking at the fact that there's a lot in development, which is an observation that we all made, and just one thing in test, and wondering if the team makeup is effective for the kind of work that they're doing. Seems a useful question. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Here. Okay, okay, so you're, you're curious as to how well they know about no Kanban yeah. and how to use and, it. And mm -hmm. if they think, how well they think they're doing it. Yeah. And, and I just want to note for everybody here, Mark and I are repeating a lot of the things that you say because the microphones that we're wearing are the only thing that the people on the live stream can hear, and we want them to get some value out of it too. <laughs> so if it seems like we're very slowly repeating okay. the things that you say, yes, that's deliberate. It is purposeful, we are. yes. <laughs> it is purposeful. McCall. I'd be interested to know how long these items have been alive. Right? Yes. So if we are observing. That's a great like, question. Team, we have iterations, right? So, so we might be talking about where are you in your sprint. If you don't have an iteration, then I'd certainly be like to know how long has somebody been worked on before we drew more things in? Because nothing's made it to them. Right. Mm. Yeah, so there's no indication that talks about cycle time, lead time, anything like that. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. so that's a really good question. There was also a <coughs> statement over here, I think, that we might have missed about how it looked more like a push system than a pull system, right. tied back to the whip limits, but I think also based on the fact of just the way the board looked, right? It looks like a task board. It looks like a task board. Okay. There's some other questions. Hi. Yes? An overall question, how are they using this to manage their work? I mean, it's not clear that it's from some of the other observations and questions that it's really, they're really using it well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Not clear that they're using it well. Has okay. anyone ever seen boards like this? A lot. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would, okay. I would ask it if it's on the things in the development column or even in the analysis column, are some of them actually done and just haven't been, the opportunity, had the opportunity to do it for the next column yet? Ah. They benefit from having it doing it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so there's, there's no clear visual indication of what might have been finished in each of these pieces of work, which is, is similar to what uh, the other question that we had about how, how long have these items been on here. Yeah. Or okay. how often is the board updated? How often right. is the board updated? Another good question. We had I think we had some hands over question, here, too. Yeah. Is, is there a constraint? A con mm, is there a constraint? Yes. And what sorts of things do you have in mind when you frame that question? Ah, in okay. Room, the person sitting there waiting for somebody to hand them something, mm -hmm. and they need a tool that they don't have. Right. Is the system down? Uh, I mean, we don't know any of that. So a whole line of questioning about why is there only one item in test relative to all the other work that we see visualized? Is the tester actually bored, or is there something that prevents work from moving into that state? Okay, one, that, one more. Yeah. People are working on more than one item. Yep. Yep. So how many people are working on more than one item? Not that there's right or wrong, but right. I just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we had one more hand up yeah. over there, I think. I'm <clears throat> curious what level of collaboration is going on. Why mm. these phases? Uh, are they working in silos? Okay. So yeah. the comment was, why are they working in silos? If they are working in silos, and what collaboration is actually occurring, if if any at all? Okay. Should we move on to the next slide? Yeah, that's a nice lead into the next slide. It is slide, a next actually. slide. <laughs> so, all right, so we are still working as a whole group. There's a slight difference. This is the prior one. Here's the new one. There's a slight difference, very slight, going on here. What, what do you notice now? The team has taken some of your advice. Now, no one really has mentioned it yet, but they've taken some of your advice. They come in the next day, you walk in, <laughs> you see this as a slight difference. You're mapping the uh, different states through which work goes through. Okay. So yeah. So you notice that the, the column names, the headers, they have changed. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Somebody had something over here. Was it you, Carrie? No? Yeah, I was, I was just going to say that too. You're going to say that too? Okay. Same thing. Okay. Why might this be more helpful? Might be doing more IT related work as opposed to software development. Okay. So maybe it's not a software development team that's actually, you're actually helping. 
Okay, that, that could very well, that could be the case. Yeah. Right. An excellent question. What right. service are we trying to improve? <coughs> Kari had her head up, hand up a while right. ago. <laughs> By changing this, the names of the states, the people who tend to perform the role of tester is no longer confined, feels confined to doing things in test. So you're increasing the potential for collaboration between those names. Yes. Yeah. So her point was by shifting the names of the columns so that they don't align to roles. job descriptions yeah. or roles, we can create an opportunity for greater levels of collaboration. And I, per, I, I think I speak for Trent too when we talk, when I say this, that this small change could be something that is so crucial to teams, whether it's a software team or not. When you make those, when you talk about the work that's actually being performed in that column versus the, as Trent said, the role that's, that's being done, you begin, at least it opens up that conversation about, hey, can you, can you help over here, um, you know, what is it that we can do to actually move this thing along? And you don't necessarily feel confined. And I, to me, this is one of the initial places when working with teams, I like to kind of tease out a little bit with the team. Like, can we find other ways to talk about this versus testing, development, you know, and that, anal, you know analyzing or whatever. Anything else? Yes, McCall. Just one observation, and maybe <coughs> I'm cheating a little bit because I follow Trent on Twitter and mm -hmm. it's a fascinating tweet recently. This first <laughs> column is named Options. Oh, yeah. It brings into sort of light a really cool element of, uh, of the, the, the nature of a backlog where the, the highlight here is we are doing this thing right. Are we doing this thing? Is this a thing we're, we're going to do? Should we be reanalyzing re, uh, the things that we could be doing instead? Instead of, for example, to do, which is just, this is it, do it. Um, yeah, that's what we had before was yeah. to do. Yeah. That's, that's a cool change. Right, right. So uh, thanks for that. Uh, just to make sure that the live stream understands, not only did we change the names of the columns where the knowledge increases throughout the workflow, but we also changed the leftmost name you know, from a to do to options to shift the mindset, so it's not just, well, this is a list of tasks. Instead, these are things that we might choose to do. And then we can be more, well, for me anyway, and for teams that I've worked with, I've seen that shift some of the conversation around. Helps get it away from that sort of a push idea where, okay, work's just coming at us, we have a to-do list, and now instead, oh, we've got some options. Which of these do we want to exploit? Right? It's a little bit different, slightly more empowering, maybe more than slightly with some organizations. The previous one you could interpret as one project. Hmm. And so it's multiple tasks. This you could look at as multiple projects or many, many, many projects <coughs> and not just one, one thing you're trying to accomplish, but lots with the two. Yeah, it frames it a bit differently, right? So, so you're, you're saying that it's, you know, prior one looked like a single project and this one looks like it might be something else. Maybe several small projects. Maybe lots of small projects. <laughs> this triggers something in my mind, like thinking like the previous one was down more down to team level. Mm. This might be about scaling something. This might be something at a much higher level where I'm actually looking at things in discovery before we actually... Because of the options yeah. aspect of it? Uh, options and discovery, yeah. Because it provides more of a scaling opportunity yeah. to look at things. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That sense that this board might be applicable at an organizational level or, or somewhere much higher up than a team. Cool. Okay. You ready to do this at your tables? Yeah. We have lots of examples and scenarios. All right. All right. So, are we going to time them? Three minutes. Three, three minutes. So we'll, for each for each new slide, we'll give you about three minutes. Talk amongst yourselves, same questions that you're answering before, and then we'll do a debrief, and then we'll move on to the next one. All right, here's your next board.
About one more minute. One more minute. My pleasure. Good. All right. All right, let's bring it back. Let me say, for those who happen to have seen us do this at Agile DC, uh, the good news is we actually have more boards tonight. So uh, it, it, this is not a complete, yes, Carrie's excited. This is not, this is not a complete uh, duplicate of, of what you may have seen before. So we're excited to do the other ones with you too. All right, that being said, who has some uh, observations and then just as important questions that they would ask? Not all at once. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Something happening in Verify that's holding everything else up. <laughs> or, or not happening. Something well, not true. happening in Verify. <laughs> that <laughs> Something not happening in Verify. Yeah. It sure looks that way, right? <clears throat> the alternative was that maybe John Dunn isn't really done. Mm. Well, that, that could so, very well be the case. Maybe Dunn isn't really done. So what questions would you ask to explore more about what, about what that might mean? So there was a comment that there's no policies, and you're absolutely correct. And I will say, and maybe this is something we could think about for the future, none of these boards have explicit policies shown at the bottom. So I, we probably should have said at the very beginning, and your comment is, is dead on. Um, we will assume that there are some types of something going on there. Whether they're good or not, or whether they're following them or not, uh, can only be said. But you can certainly ask questions to that effect. But you will not see anything actually displayed to that effect. What else? If they have no work limits, and perhaps the, if they do have them, it's too, the work limit is too large in the limitation, because uh, these things move and they just end up with this big pile of stuff that can't, can't move forward because of whatever is not happening in there. Right. No whip limits and a large queue that has built up in implementation done. So it looks like uh, it, in discovery and implementation, they both have a lot of things in done, uh, more so than, than what they're doing. Um, and so one of the questions we had was, how much collaboration is going on? It, it looks mm. as if people are staying in their columns, mm -hmm. picking up something, moving it to done, and probably picking up the next thing. And so is there collaboration? What are people doing to get things moved across the board? OK, so <clears throat> the question you would ask, given that there seems to be a lot of work queuing up in the done columns, how much collaboration is taking place? Because you suspect that there's a lot of siloed work across this, this value stream. Seems like a good line of questioning. Yeah, excellent. There's a potential bottleneck, right? And I think we really highlighted that with, mm -hmm. with the verify. Right? Yeah. That there's a lot of the done, and once those shift, verify becomes a bottleneck. Regardless of whether it's working or not, that's going to be a bottleneck. Right. So. There's one thing in Verify. There's a lot of things in implementation done. What is it that is keeping work from flowing to that, you know, across that boundary? Yeah. And you're hypothesizing that there's some sort of bottle, bottleneck there. Leading yeah. To a potential bottleneck. And sure. I, I think you're not the only one to point that out. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So you might ask the team who's available to help get some things from implementation done, start um, into Verify. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely so. And kind of going with what Mark was saying, as far as the collaboration is concerned, uh, what, what, can, what can people do to help 
here, if, if that is even what needs to, I mean, presumably that's what needs to happen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly right. Yeah, and, and I really like the way you <laughs> framed that question. Who's available to help get some of that stuff that's in implementation done you know, through Verify? Because implicit in, the, in that statement is that that would be a good thing to do. <laughs> And yet we think it's not happening by looking at the board. So that line of questioning might tease out the assumptions that they have about why or how they can't do that. I think that'd be a great question to ask. Yes? I had raised the question of with the verification process, I was wondering if you could almost eliminate that entirely and build that into the implementation process. So as you're implementing it, can you also be verifying that everything's going smoothly? That's kind of the two teams collaborating Okay. And is the verification process also considered to be instantaneous, like the final product is finished and you're trying to push it out? Or is it like, okay, it's been out for six months, you're verifying to make sure that it's still functioning properly after its implementation? That was another question that I was wondering. Uh, great question. Let's see if I can rephrase real quickly. So one of them, uh, the first one was if uh, verification could be actually be incorporated into the implementation aspect of things, so certainly worth asking and at least understanding better why they set up their, you know, their system the way they did. Certainly get some ideas from that. And then your other comment was, uh, once it's in Verify, what does that actually mean? Does it mean that it, it sits there for a long time or can it be, uh, once it's done, be immediately pushed to, to done, right? Yeah, okay, great things to ask. Anyone else? Yes, one more. It's just visual. First thing Trent talked about uh, at the beginning was just walking up to this board, even though if you have all these other questions, the types of questions I we might be asking are different because we've now got this concept of doing and done, mm. um, and that's that's different. And that's from my experience, an important part of any of these things is how much information am I gathering before I ask a question? Because uh, those boards are supposed to be. Information radiators. Yes. Yeah, yes. I think that's that's wonderful because <clears throat> compared to the prior board, immediately when we look at this, we have more granularity about how things have been progressing through the workflow. We've got more details because we have the done column. Now, whether they are you know using that appropriately or not, whether or not they had shared definitions of that, they've conceptualized it, and so we know oh some things are in progress and some things are waiting which is more detailed than we had before. Good observation. Ready for the next one? Yeah. You guys ready? You have it? Okay. Yep. Boom. We'll do three minutes again.
All right, the okay. Chinese have spoken. <laughs> awesome. Hey, that works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a good question. <laughs> Everybody's got headphones at home. Now he's <laughs> deaf. Yes. All right, so what conversations did you guys have around this board? What have you noticed? What have you observed? They broke the whip limit. Where did they break the whip limit? Discovery. Discovery. Okay. What questions might you ask when you see that? Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> why did you break the whip limit? Well, what is your understanding as a team of what a whip limit is? Okay. So you may even want to start there. Do you understand Ooh. what the whip limit is? Why did you set it at three? And of course, why? Well, I, I like the way that was phrased, though. Like, mm -hmm. what is your understanding mm -hmm. as a team of the whip limit, right? And its purpose. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then mm -hmm. we expanded on that because we said, you know, <coughs> looking at backlog, it probably looks like it probably gives a very unstructured backlog, no particular order, no priority. Is is even owned by playing the role of even prioritizing it. So it looks like to us that they're just pulling work from discovery and trying to prioritize what they should be working on. Oh, so that's a neat assumption. That's you think that there's so much in discovery because the backlog's poorly ordered, so they're doing some work to try to figure out what they should actually do. Because, because they're only violating the whip limit there. They're not violating it farther along. Hmm. Okay. What questions would you ask based on that? Well, I'd be asking, how do they determine the priority? Ooh, OK. How do they determine priority? Cool. What even role, what's the team even made up of what role and responsibilities? Mm, so so. Somebody playing some type of ownership or product owner or something like this on the team. Okay, so you think they might not have the, the roles or the people necessary to figure out to them, what's most right. important? Yeah, okay. That's reasonable. It would be nice to know how many people are working on discovery. I would ask that. Ah, how many people are doing discovery? Yeah. That's a good question, too. I think we've got somebody over here. Uh, yeah, my question was around, um, did uh, so something uh, fail, maybe two failed in Verify, where they sent back to Discovery? Mm. Um, so is that why they have five now? Ah, that's an ex excellent point. If uh, things during verification didn't pass verification, did they actually pick it up, move it back, uh, perhaps to Discovery, and thus breaking the whip limit? Otherwise, where, where else would you? Right. Right. Okay. Don't they have six in discovery though? Uh, they do. One, two, three, four. Yeah, they do have six in discovery. Yes. Does the done one also count for the Yes. Yeah. yeah. They were still violating the whip limit even before that if that were to have happened. No, he he said there were five in discovery, but I said there's six. I just want to make sure that the that the one in the done column also counts counted against sure. the whip limit. Sure. Yes? What's the difference between discovery and implementation? Is that a question that you would ask? It would. It yeah. Is. Why is it? If you're working it, you're working it. Okay. Just analyze this and other work is going there. It possibly for them that it could mean that uh, discovery is their form of some type of analysis, some type of background researching or understanding of what the thing actually is before they actually work on it or implement it. But certainly worth asking. You know, if, if you're not sure and you want to get a better understanding from them, what they think discovery means. Assuming that we did move items out of Verify back into discovery, yeah. um, how well are they defining their definition of done to be verified? <clears throat> okay. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a useful question. So how well do they verify or how well do they hold to whatever definition of done they might have for, for discovery or verify. Yeah. Let's take one more comment and we're going to go on to another board. Yeah. I'm just looking at this thing. How did stuff get into the backlog in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> <Are you> really? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's back to one of the other observations, right? Well, yeah. Well, it's, it's similar, but mm -hmm.
that Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, what I really like, like it, it's, it's just a visualization. It's a board, right? We don't have a whole lot of context, but a couple thoughts have been, wow, geez, we potentially have difficulty with priorita prioritization or understanding what it is that we need to do. And I really liked how you put it. I think I might misquote you, but I think it was, you guys have no idea what you were getting into. Right? That's what sort of this leads us to thinking because there's a lot of early work going on and nothing has made it very far. At least that's how it looks in the current state, right? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So, so that, the comment is it, it, we're early into a sprint. It does look a little bit like an early sprint, right? Move everything into mm. sort of in progress or started or whatever the first stage is because it's day one that of the sprint. Happen. We got to get some, you know, we got to get off and run it. Yeah. So it's not, it's not flowing. Yeah, there's a little flow. OK. All right. All right, should we do another one? Yes. Having fun? Yes. 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 Let's keep yes. going. OK. <laughs> Here is your next board. We've got about 30 seconds left. About 30 seconds. work yeah it works all right what were some of the conversations you had at your table for this configuration Christmas shopping Christmas shopping okay oh nothing to do with Kanban <laughs> just Christmas shopping that's fair they are Christmas shopping and not working yeah. that's your implication it was an honest answer <laughs> yes McCall 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and why is that? Then you may not have a problem. <clears throat> if anybody's not engaged on the team, then maybe there's a maybe there's a something that you might be different. Take a step further. Why? Why? What, le uh, what right, leads sorry. you to that? Yeah, sure. Uh, because we are in every category under our WIP limits, which were set presumably for some kind of reason. But to Mark's point, maybe they are limits and intended to be that, not a guideline about how full we want a thing. Mm -hmm. So again, if if, if nobody's under if nobody is underutilized, then you might be doing a great job. Okay. But that's if, if someone is underutilized, you've not yet met your whip limits, maybe some more work should come in. Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent, excellent observation uh, for that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that is in line with what Trent and I were, were going for here. Yes. I, I would say with the fact that they have a significant number of stories in the junk column that they're capable of doing work, and the fact that discovery is not at a full three would seem to indicate to me that they're unclear in terms of which option is the highest priority to pull in. So I would, I would probably ask them how their options are prioritized. OK. OK, so because their discovery has not uh, hit three yet, maybe they're having some challenges bringing in work. So you want to ask them, do they, you know, what, what process do they use or what thinking do they use to bring something into the discovery? At least ask around that, yeah. OK. Well, one thing we didn't like was that no one has pulled the, uh, the ticket from discovery down to doing when the whip limit's two. Oh. And so it, it seems like there's maybe something wrong. So Terry's suggestion was maybe that, maybe that the stories are too large. And that if however many people are implementing, they <coughs> still can't pull just one story into maybe there's multiple, doing. Maybe there's multiple people working on that implementation too when they originally thought. Yeah. I mean, here's a question I probably would have been asked at the previous board. <coughs> How did the team even come up with the initial whip limits? That's a good question. Yep. How did they come up they with the whip limits? Mm -hmm. changing it, but how did you even define the initial whip limits? And have they ever been changed? So how'd you how'd you get to the whip limits? And have you ever experimented with them? Those are useful. I like the comment about, well, we've got a free space in implement in implementation, and there's something done in discovery, so What's the logic behind not pulling that over yet? Yeah, and that's a neat little smell, potentially. Mm -hmm. Yes? You could ask if the board's, are we updating the board? Mm. Out of date, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> sure. The team got pulled off onto a firefighting, a dumpster fighter, dumpster firefighting mission. And it's just been abandoned. Yeah. yeah, yeah, excellent point. Is the board up to date? Yeah, I, one of the things that I would want to ask here is, is the board up to date? But also, we do have a lot of items in done. That was noticed before. So the team's able to do work. But this, it, it's difficult to know what to, what to do with this board because things are within the WIP limits. But we don't, because it's a, it's a moment in time, we don't know anything about the flow. Right? So this could be good, or it could be stale. People could be pulled off on a dumpster fire, as you called it. <laughs> right? We don't know. So this one, in, in some ways, I think, raises a lot more questions than some of the other ones that have an obvious problem. What, what would make this interpretation easier for you? What else could you? Might, what else might you want to see? Cycle time threshold. Okay, so cycle time. Okay, anything else? What's the cycle time? Cycle time, okay. What is it? Oh, I don't know. I, I mean, I've no, I think he's asking what is cycle time. Oh, what time, is period. cycle? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's three. Uh, no, okay. Uh, cycle time is the amount of time it takes to finish it once, once you bring it into the system. So once it hits doing until, until it's done, okay? That's how we're defining the cycle time here. So um, I am kind of asking a leading question because it's gonna serve for another board later, but if we don't hit it, that's okay, because we'll get to it, yeah. I was gonna go back, to, I'm sorry, off topic from your question. But that's all right. So, someone mentioned it earlier, and I just, I shared with the table here, right? We didn't talk about, there, there isn't a concept of, of a sprint, a time box in Kanban. 
Right. And for folks that don't have a background, that might be an important thing to understand. Oh, thank you. Yes, you're absolutely correct. There is not a defined time box like Scrum has within a Kanban system. So we did, I don't know if we mentioned that or not in the beginning. No, but, I did not. But did uh, not. that is a good thing. For those who, who were not aware of that, um, Kanban is not designed to have a, uh, a, time, a time box, as you indicate. All right. What about like complexity or level of effort? In what sense? Well, in the sense the point uh, that the other gentleman raised up there, what if a task takes two people to do? Um, does that mean that task is going to be faster than the two single person task? Even though they might be interdependent? I don't, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure what you're asking. Is it, if it's a problem if more than one person is working well, on something? Say, say or? The thing I'm doing right now requires <clears throat> two people. Yeah, well, it's not, two pe it's not two people. It's we're going to uh, allow two items into implementation. Two items. Yeah, but I think the, the line of question here, Mark, is about sort of the size or complexity of the items. Okay. Right? So, so I think you're sort of probing whether or not the WIP limits should be held regardless of the relative size or complexity of the different items. Because if we think back to Scrum, right, a lot of Scrum implementations we have story points, and story points are this way to estimate the relative complexity of an item. So if you have an eight, that's significantly more challenging in some respects than a one, right, because we've assigned this different story. That's the sort of thing that you're getting to, yes or no? <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so we're there. Um, yeah, generally speaking, I, I have seen some teams that will use story points or some equivalent in Kanban, <coughs> but in my experience, they are rare. So what is much more common is to instead have something either before it gets into this list of options or when it crosses from options into you know, the first item, the first column, the first state, make it go through some sort of pass where the team checks and sees, okay, do we have a pretty good sense of what this is? You know, is it of a reasonable size for us? And if so, all right, we pull it in uh, and we work on it. But even if it's bigger than a bunch of other stuff, the, that's okay. So that the relative sizing isn't all that important. Uh, and instead, just allow it to come out, come out in the wash is probably a, a sort of gross way to say it, but, um, what happens is you get enough items flowing through the system and you begin to build up a data set that allows you to see what the cycle time maps out to. You can put together a, a nice histogram, some charts around that. Um, and then you can use that for some predictability. Some will take longer than others, but it should approach a mean over time if you have enough pieces of work. And so that allows you to be predictable without a detailed level of estimation other than does this seem reasonable for us to, to complete? And then team norms around that rather than trying to norm around a series of story points. But as I said, you could use those measures if it's something that works in the context, if the team is familiar with it, uh, and then use that as, a, as another layering over the cycle time to see, you know, does it, you know, does these things that we call eights consistently take more time than these things we estimate to be one? Uh, a lot of data has suggested that that doesn't add you much in terms of predictability, but di different contexts are different. Does that help? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, one more comment. Yeah. Okay. Um, me and him talked about this, and he said that maybe it was late in the sprint, and the team is not pulling in one at a time because they want to get the complete when they pull in. It's not pulling in many. So they were pulling in one, one each so they could complete that one before the end of the sprint. Okay. So, okay. So, we know that we don't have sprints within Kanban. Okay. Just, just so you know. So, the idea of more is what flow do we have through the system, you know, through the actual boards themselves. So, with that said, does that change at all your thoughts? I want to make sure I understand. 
it doesn't change it. It just means I'm, I'm trying to, well, this is what we discussed. I, I'm okay. This, but yeah. what happens is um, the way the options are all lined up. Yep. And then you're towards the end. Towards so, the end of. Okay, we well, don't have a square, but you, right. you have to have some kind of uh, limitation. Do you? When, when, you're, when you're ending. Towards the end of a like, project completion. Exactly. Right? Or a release. Towards the end of a release, towards, towards something exactly. like so an end date. Just okay. Finish. Okay. So you're bringing in just what you can because you're facing up maybe a, a deadline or something exactly. like that. Okay. I, and go ahead. And so because of that, you're bringing in just just one at a time. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that'd be something to ask about. Is like, are you guys up against a deadline? Do you have something that you're racing towards? Is there a, a, a fixed date? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, now that we've sort of touched on the sprint and Kanban stuff, I, again, I do want to say something. I mean, Mark, you've done a good job of saying, you know, there is no set iteration uh, in Kanban. But that doesn't mean we can't introduce cadences, right? We could do planning on a repeated cycle. We could do delivery on a repeated cycle. They could be on the same cadence. They could be on different cadences, right? We can do those things. Also, we can marry this, as I think you have suggested, this sort of WIP-limited knowledge discovery workflow with a sprint. So you can, you can tie Scrum and Kanban together if you want to. You, do, you, know, you don't have to. But yes, you could use a board like this for your sprint. And you could establish WIP limits on the stories or, or whatever uh, the items are that you progress through the sprint. You don't have to choose one or the other. I've known teams that have done Scrum. They, they like Scrum, they like the time boxes, they like the fixed iterations, but rather than pulling everything in, as you suggested, the prior board might look like you know, day one of the sprint, they established whip limits so that they had a smooth flow throughout the sprint. And there's nothing that says you can't do that. You can't couple the two together. <laughs> and worry about how do I, how do I plan this, but, but I think that the realization I'm talking about, the re-realization, I guess, maybe is you have to really, what is this tool for, and where is this tool properly applied? So it's not the entire continuum, because no one tool is the, the entire continuum. It is a piece of the continuum that needs to be managed effectively, and could be arguably the central piece of the entire continuum, the execution and implementation phase. And if that's correct, I like where you're going. Uh, I want to I want to expand on it just a little bit. So to repeat for those who are not in the room, you're talking about how this and then also Scrum are parts of the overall process from conceptualization to it's all done. We all party and go home in our nice new Corvettes that this awesome project bought us. <laughs> yes, especially in the context that we're thinking about. But also know in that I have seen organizations that will use this sort of thing at the team level, and then they'll have a higher level Kanban that will broker that process. Usually it's divided into two. So there's the, it would be on this side for all of you, the, the front end of how do we figure out what it is we're going to do? So how do we groom ideas to discover the project that the team will implement? And then once we get to done from this sense, how do we then bring it to our customers and the marketplace and release it to the world so that we can get paid. And you can have higher level visualization systems that, that manage that workflow separate from the team. But you're right, in this context, we're thinking about a team, a relatively small focused group. But again, if this is just simple IT type work, mm -hmm. done might be done. Like that, it that might task be. is 
done. Right. It's completed. Yeah. If this is, you know, upgrade that server to the latest version of Linux, right. that may actually be done. Yes. All right. Let's move along. Here's your next one. Give you about two and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I love the laughter. All right. You know what I'm going to say, right? So, <laughs> what am I going to say? Merry Christmas to you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, what would you uh, what would you ask the team after they're done with their stand up? Yes. What does hold on hold mean? Yes. <laughs> Certainly a good place yes. to start. What does on hold mean? What does that mean? Well, we talked about the policy Okay. Mm -hmm. So the policies, if there are any, and what those policies are, or around them for going on hold. Okay. Yep. Policies. Has anyone seen Kanban boards with a specific column for on hold? Yes, I see some yeses. Blocked. <laughs> Actual columns. Okay. We'll give our thoughts on that in a minute. But yeah. Um, yeah. For Kanban, how do you track impediments? Like, do you do that here? Or? How do you track? Yes, you do it on here, and we actually have a board coming up that will address that. Oh, I'm sorry, the question was, how do you track impediments? And do you do it on the board? And the answer is yes, you can. And in many ways, that is, might be how they're addressing that question, or that issue here. So one of the questions could be, if they're on hold, is, is this an impediment? Or what, I think maybe to your point, what are the on hold items made up of? I mean, what, what causes them to be there? Yeah. So to, to that very point, while we're asking about what on hold means, and we're talking about uh, uh, whether or not there are impediments, if, if there are no width limits on a particular column, mm. can we really trust the cycle time that we're coming up with? Or are these two distinct boards? With an, they have an infinite column between them, so 
there's not a lot of relationship between what happens in discovery <coughs> at what pace and what happens in the implementation and verify cycle. What if I told you that it was not two separate boards? What would Does you say? cycle time matter? Say yes. <laughs> then you may want to consider it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are excellent points, though. Um, I want to just yeah. emphasize that. So the point that's being made, just, just to make sure that we all follow with this, one of the reasons um, that one of the principles of Kanban is to, to limit WIP, work in progress, is so that you can begin to manage flow. And what we have here is an unconstrained system. Because there is no WIP limit on the on hold column, the point that McCall was making was, well, you probably don't care about lead time. Right? Because we can't predictably measure it because we have a column that has no whip limit. So what can happen with an on hold column like this is it just becomes a whip hole, a black hole of whip. Um, and it can grow, never ending. And that means we cannot control, we have no effective lever to reliably manage and predict the cycle time. So that's a really key point. I think that's an interesting line of reasoning because that harkens back to the idea that I think Mark was, or, or that was being suggested that maybe these are two separate workflows, right? So you could see that on hold as something where we're handing off from one to the other. Uh, maybe we sort of learn and conceptualize what the customer wants. It goes on hold, they get back to us, we decide to proceed and so on. And then that waiting is, is acceptable. Um, maybe. Still worth asking. I think that on hold column, particularly with the width limit, can be very helpful if your on hold policy is that this is something that some work has to sit because there's an external group in the company or infrastructure or something that needs to deal with it. And what it does is it allows you with the width limit so that nothing can then move beyond it to go to management or whomever to say, this is causing a block in the flow of our work. And so that's the power of having that column is it allows you to have conversations within the team and external to the team about what's blocking this flow. I, I like that. So essentially you're <laughs> suggesting uh, if that were whip limited, then it becomes useful because it could block the flow of work, right? Our system could fill up and we have no way to get around it, maybe that whip limit is full, and then it becomes a signal to other arms of the organization to remove whatever blockages have been introduced by that. Right. Good to yeah. that, it will provoke conversation. Right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Especially if the board's up on the wall where everyone can see as they're watching. Right. right. It'll provoke conversation if there's whip limit. If there's no whip limit like we have now, eh, work just goes into there and it sits. No big deal. The rest of the work flows around, maybe, maybe not. Eh. <laughs> well, and so my, my philosophy on this <clears throat> is that I would really question the team whether on hold is, makes a lot of sense. And what I mean by that is I like to think of these columns as the flow of work. And if on hold is something that yeah, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, that actually may not be the flow of work. That could be an exception that occurs and are there better mechanisms to act, actually signal that something is on hold, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, however, what you brought up certainly does have its advantages because you are producing the whip, you are producing, uh, uh, you're, you're limiting how much can actually go in there. And so as the people walk by in your example, it, it's showing that we have, we have an issue here, we have something that's going on. But for me, I would actually question the team is, you know, is this really part of your flow and on hold or not? So, uh, here and then here. One, one question around that might be, is implementation 
documentation pulling from on hold, right. or are they pulling from discovery done, right. or are they pulling from either? It, to me, that's what, what's somewhat confusing is what's implement, implementation pulling from? Is on hold or is it, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so my brother's <clears throat> watching this on live stream, and he sent me some text to ask you a question. Uh, <laughs> me personally, or? Yes. Awesome. I think when you talked about cycle time, he says, what's the difference between lead time and cycle time? Yes. <laughs> I, I knew someone was going to catch me on that. Yeah. And then he also says, ask them, how do you calculate width and what is the throughput? What's the what? The throughput. Oh, what's the throughput? The wow. That's a lot of good stuff. I'll give my version. You want to give your version? So, his name is Ba. Ba? Ba Valentine. Hey, Valentine. Hello. <laughs> was he born in February? Was he born in February? Yes, he was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, so the difference between a cycle time and lead time, the way I think of it, a is if you Google it, you're going to find every different answer you could possibly find. So I don't know how helpful that is. Uh, Lead time for me, the way I think of it, is when something first gets introduced here to when it actually gets done, it can be considered lead time. When you first pull something into implementation and it gets done, it's cycle time. That's my definition. Is that the one that you typically go with, Trent? Uh, no. No. But <laughs> so I think that's useful. You just Googled us. Um, you know, I, and I think it, I think it's okay it, it, because it, this illustrates why it's so important <laughs> to have these definitions yeah. explicit and and agreed upon. So I, your lead time is what I would call sort of customer lead time. Right. Like as soon as something came into the queue, but we haven't committed to doing it yet, you know. Uh, and then once we decide to do it, that's lead time through the system. Right. And then cycle time generally just gets confusing. Uh, so I think it's better to call out like time in process. So how long does something spend in discovery, and how long does it spend in implementation, and how long does it spend in